Okay, so we're ready for our uh, third and final session of uh, day one of our Taiwan of Taiwan Studies uh, summer school. Uh, I'm delighted to um, welcome back uh, Professor uh, Sun Jia Sui from uh, our third speaker from uh, Donghua uh, University. So I, I say welcome back because uh, she spoke uh, at SOIC, last spoke at SOIC in 2004. Uh, oh. uh, when really? when our Taiwan Center was just starting to get um, uh, developed, it was the year I graduated actually, yeah. um, <laughs> and the first year I was working at, at, at SOAS. And then we met again uh, the next year, um, uh, so Professor Sun, uh, in 2005 she'd already joined uh, Donghua uh, University after completing her PhD uh, at the University of, of, of Birmingham. Uh, and she was at the second EATS conference in um, um, March, I think, of uh, 2005 at Bochum uh, University. Um, so on going to uh, uh, Donghua, like quite a, a few scholars, she changed her research uh, direction to move into uh, indigenous studies. And that's going to be the, uh, the topic of her first of, of, uh, of two talks. So um, in today's session, she's going to look at uh, gender and indigenous uh, TV. Um, we've, we've had talks on indigenous TV um, two years ago, I think, uh, but not from a kind of gender angle. So I'm really delighted that you uh, agreed to come back. So let's Thank give uh, Jasui a very big SOAS uh, welcome home. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'm Professor Jiaxui Sang, and I actually do the research about globalization in, in creative industry before. But today I'm going to present the gender issues uh, about indigenous television news. And for what reason we need to um, address this uh, issue here? Uh, actually, I gave a similar talk in Taiwan a few months ago, and a lot of questions raised uh, in that talk. Because in recent years, there are a lot of uh, gender issues happen in the tribe in Taiwan. So we need to see how those news and issues has been represented in the indigenous news. And does it show something different with the mainstream news? And what is gender taboo? And what is cultural translation exists in the process? Taiwan right now has 16 different ethnic groups. So what happened to the news is, um, sometimes one channel cannot cover all of news from one indigenous tribe because there are not enough news to support the channel to for the news. Therefore, uh, within those uh, 13 different tribes, sometimes news need to be translated from one channel to another one. But during the process, it's not only the translation of the language, it also the translation of culture. So anchor and reporter become the connection and bridge to bridge different culture and society within the indigenous group. But there are a lot of taboo from different tribes will affect those influence. I'm going to give different example about what reporter encounter in the context of different uh, tribes. And I can give you first example. It's about the fishing, fry fishing festival from Lan Yu. Uh, does anyone join the festival before? And do you see Andy's movie and see all of those frying fish? And you can imagine what real image in the tribe. It actually attracts a lot of tourists from all over the world to the tribe to see how it happened. But if you are female, Sometimes you couldn't join it to see uh, the ceremony. For what reason? First of all, they are taboo. People believe, local people believe, if you female touch the bowl or join the ceremony, when man goes out, the bowl will get some disease. And what do you think about that? Uh, for a pers uh, perspective of reporter, it will make difference for the female reporter and male reporter when they need to report news. How female reporter went to a festival and trying to film it and interview people but could not enter the cultural space 
and making the news. That become the first question for me to try to uh, explore what happened here and in what ways those journalists uh, resolve those problems and then still present the news. But also, it's not only a news problem, it also related with many issues right now exist in the tribe because many taboo uh, is from very go through a history and from the legend and it just lasts till now. People believe it. But right now in the real society many young people also go to others like go to the main island. So when they go back to a trip to the tribe, sometimes they, they feel they also want to join the ceremony or particularly those female young people. But they couldn't show it because traditionally they are not allowed. So there are a lot of change, not only the representation of culture, media also get involved with all of those changing process of the indigenous society. And also there are another issue is also about female role in the uh, in general indigenous society. For example, right now a lot of political figures, they are female in Taiwan. So in Han society, they can be leader of a political agenda and they have their voices and hear by the people. But when they go back to the tribe, because traditionally they are special area only for men to get in. They are not allowed to participate in the public sphere. Of course, there are many women trying to change this situation, but there are a lot of pressure. Many people told them because traditionally it's not allowed. If you do it, and you need to kind of like against the traditional way. And they are also very, um, uh, many issues need to be care. It's not only it's equal or not, because a lot of tradition actually um, change in the modern society. So the cultural reservation become an important issue. So even for the female figures, sometimes they feel they don't want to change it because they, they kind of treasure their own culture. Even it may be damage the female right, but if they think from the ethnic concept, they still try to preserve it. So here we actually see one main problem is when gender issues encounter with ethnic issues. In many cases, gender issues will be forget and people will just keep the traditional way. But many young people, they are not happy with that because for the education system, they are special way in different tribe. They can have a special um, area, cultural space. They train generation by generation what is traditional life of indigenous young people's life. But for women, they did not have such kind of cultural space but because from the first beginning, they are not allowed to get in. So for example, from Amis tribe, the young generation actually, they are thinking about to form another, like uh, another system because it's too hard for them to get into the original system, they need to um, bear the responsibility, kind of, they become the person to break the traditional way. And a lot of resistance in the tribe, especially from the elder women. So sometimes they are trying to think about, they just form a new one. So they can also have their education system to learn the traditional way of life. And I think that's what happened in the different tribe of indigenous society in Taiwan. So right now I'm going to give different uh, examples from different tribes to show you what happened here and then what are the issues raised from those situations. So I'm going to explain more about those two different fields. The first one is about flying fish. And do, do you notice about in the film it mentioned about fish? for different, for men, for women, for children. So, 
-hmm. And it's just fit with the ecosystem because different nutrition will fit with different gender and children. And I think in the uh, Tao, they believe uh, the children need and the pre pregnant women, they need more nutrition, so they have more a special fish for them. And for the elder people, sometimes it's just fish. They are not that popular. So that's kind of, yeah, that's why, so that's why we emphasize about indigenous knowledge. Because as a reporter, you got to understand how people indigenous knowledge think about, and then you can report in a proper way, and also become a bridge to convey all of those traditional knowledge to the audience from different ethnic groups. And also, uh, not only the fish, do notice about it, talking about the container. That's a play for men, play for women. Before, because if the, uh, the tourists go into the, enter the tribe, but did not know all of those cultural knowledge, they may offend people in a way they don't know. There are a lot of cultural space, for example, like female just cannot touch the touch a ball, even couldn't <coughs> enter the cultural space. But do you know why? When we think about the taboo, I think certain people really think about how what is the reason for the for the taboo and how does it begin? And the people who try always tell us it's because they are trying to protect women. Yeah, because it's kind of, I know, I see everybody's face, <laughs> but that's <laughs> what happened when I uh, first talked to them. And that's why sometimes we need to need the reporter become an interpreter and to help us to understand what, what happened there and why. And is it possible to change or when the people in the tribe, they are going to change. They may maybe under pressure because it's just not tradition. If they are trying to go into a cultural space, and I'm going to give some other example and tell you what happened later about uh, when tourists go into the tribe. There are also some change, but a lot of debating about that. But that's the first thing I want to talk about: the fish, uh, frying fish, and the bow festival. And for the second one, the second film is. Um, from Sanxia, and that's also a very famous festival called Bastai. And mm. I think everybody here the ring, the when the button touch the the bell, you will have sound. And what what is what is that for? Because it's from a story. How does this this festival begins? Because um, some people actually kind of sexual harass of the women in the uh, Sanxia tribe. So the men just kill them. And then after that, uh, there are some disaster happening in the tribe. So it's kind of inviting, it's searching for peace, inviting all of those evil, come back to the tribe and pray with them. So those rings and bells actually is inviting evil to pray with them together and as they not to damage the tribe anymore. And every uh, second year, they have this kind of festival. And the men family uh, in the tribe, they need to organize and do everything for the festival. So at the beginning, they are not, actually, they are not very, not very happy to inviting all those tourists going to the tribe. This is one of the tribe that kind of insist the traditional way because they feel that's the best of all. Communicate with with God or with evil. They are not doing it for tourists. So I think a lot of indigenous tribe change a lot because they, they are trying to fit in with all of the tourist need. But this tribe they kind of insist they want to keep an original way. But when the people more and more come into the tribe and they don't know all of those indigenous knowledge in many ways. They will offense people, but they don't know. If you bring the camera, go into try to try to film it, even though your camera need to buy with a special plan, it's kind of that plan kind of protection. Just uh, put the evil away. 
not only protection people, also protection your camera. So yeah, when you first go into a trap, you need to bring your camera to a special area, they will tap it uh, with it, and then you can go into there and then and then film it. No, so and you also hear the singing of the film. They are also special taboo for the song. They are only those people time. People can practice those song. If you practice it in other time, people believe the evil will goes to you, and then people will get ill. So there are quite a lot of taboo uh, exists in different tribe, and as a reporter, you need to explain it to the audience. So. No matter you are tourists or you are people going to the tribe, you know how to respect the traditional way. And then uh, you did not do something it's not proper to make the people feel angry with that. So I think that's part of the reason. All those reporters and need to be become a bridge when reporting all of those news. They need to talking about what is the gender issues and what is the cultural space of gender and who is a place you can go and who is a place you cannot go. Because not only female, there are also place male cannot go. Or there are also place female cannot go. So sometimes when you need to assign some journalists to reporting the news, you need to distinguish men and women. Because for some reason if you go there and then you cannot go into a cultural space and then you couldn't get a film. So there are a lot of organizations involved with it. People probably didn't see any indigenous news before, so at the beginning I'm showing some photos about those people I, I do an interview with. And uh, this is different tribe of the indigenous people, and they report the news, for example. This is from Amis. And this is one of the section they are inviting elder people to say something. Uh, and Sometimes they introduce some indigenous culture and sometimes kind of encourage young people to speak their own language in one section of the news. And actually, many people, if they die, elder people, if they die, no one knows how to speak in that tribe, uh, in, of the language in that tribe, because um, young people, actually, right now the reporter is about 50 years old. But those people that really know the language is about 70 or 80 years old. And for a younger generation like my student, sometimes they are making the indigenous news but with Han language, not their own language. Because even you know how to speak English, it's different requirement when you need to be a reporter or anchor on the stage. And that's what happened for the younger generation. And for some elder people, about 70 or 80 years old, in the early stage, they do come to the indigenous television news re to report news. But later, it's too old for them. Every week, come from the mountain, go through about five hours time to have news, to feel about half, half hour time, and then go back to the tribe. And for the, in the in television, indigenous television news, it also costs too much for the transportation fee to invite someone to reporting the news. But on the other hand, those language may no longer uh, exist if they didn't feel it at this time. So that's what happened. Mm. And this is a Taiya. And this is another elder people. And this is from Banu. And you can see sometimes they, they wear like Western style. Dress for home, but sometimes it's traditional one. Yeah, because they are trying to figure out what what audiences are so different, different generation, different ones. So they are trying to test which one people like most. And then, and this is a uh, taluko. Uh, you can see their traditional architecture and their like special way, like the white color one. Uh, you can see this. This is a lot, a lot of eyes, yeah, mm -hmm. from the pattern. Yeah, and well, now I... uh, yeah, this is uh, the first speaker is from this tribe. The first speaker this morning, um, and this is Beinan. This is Kamalan. 
and you can see sometimes they use uh, um, like the spelling of Roman, uh, but sometimes it's uh, Han character, and they are also debating. Because if you use, use this language, most of the Taiwanese people cannot understand. Not only they couldn't listen, even they see it, they also couldn't understand it. But they keep the original pronunciation of the indigenous word. So some linguistic feel like it's a proper way to use this language. But if you need wider audience to understand the news, you need to put a hand subtitle on the bottom of it. And this is Lu Kai. And you can see this one and this one, they are all the tribe in the mountain, so you can see the background. <laughs> you see it. Yeah. And this is Zhou Zhu. If, uh, everybody, if someone knows Ali Shan, this is the uh, mountain, mountain tribe too. And uh, the, for the elder people, sometimes, for example, this is a priest say uh, Zhou uh, language, like inviting young people to speak their own language. And this is a uh, Sakilaya. And you can see because they are trying to put all of those cultural image in one page. So you can see they have this one, they have the dress, they have the, the architecture. And actually when it's moving, it's a fire just keep moving on the screen. So sometimes you can see people really eager to keep their, preserve their culture and so trying to put everything in the news. But sometimes it's too much. So <laughs> they are also need to adjust it. And um, okay, so this is also uh This is the the tribe from the uh the the bell you just saw. This and this is the flying fish tribe from Dawu. Okay, so this is the people I interview. So I uh I will give you I will tell you more story about okay. This is the flying fish one. So, uh, and this one, I hear people are curious about what is this for. And when the when the bell rings, that means inviting the evil face with them. So it's like kind of trying to be a peaceful way with the people they they are fighting before. So that's important every year to inviting people to do that. And this is from Taiwan, uh, glass, glass beads. Uh, I think many people like it. And traditionally, different family from different class, they own the different beads. It's like one generation to another generation. But right now, um, a lot of people also kind of imitate that. So the cultural production sometimes lost the original meaning because it used to be only one family with one and I show this because I want to tell you one story about uh, Taiwan indigenous journalists when they're trying to make news about this one she encountered some problem first of all uh, she need to borrow it to film it but the people in the tribe is the leader class so the person on the beats actually tell her you are not allowed to see it because you did, did not belong to the same class so she need to bring her husband her husband also belong the leader class of that tribe and it's male only when her husband appear and then she is allowed to film it for the audience and it's very strict in the tribe because they feel it's kind of the represent representation of the of the class and representation of the um, the status so not everyone can see special bits and sometimes they also hesitate to show it in front of all of the audience that means everybody can see it and it's a small it's just it's not only a story it's talking about how the problem a journalist encounter in terms of gender, in terms of class, during the interview process, even you want to see this one, you need to be identified as a man or a female journalist.
before you can film this one. And that's what happened in Taiwan tribe. And there are also, you can also see, uh, if you are a female reporter, you went to uh, Lan Yu and trying to report news about uh, flying fish, you are not allowed to go near the, the boat. You are not allowed to, to go into the cultural space of ceremony. And in what ways you can make you can make the news. You need to cope with another male reporter or field photographer and then you need to do it together. And in many ways the representation of the film will only show the angle from the male perspective, not female one. That's why the first question uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to raise uh, here for the research is we need to pay attention about the gender inequity representation in the indigenous film and news. In many ways, you couldn't see the female in the film, even they are doing the same thing with women. And in many cases, they are on the background, not in the front. But sometimes they are doing many, many things, but they are not catch your attention in the whole ceremony. For example, in the uh, Taiwan, this one, in the final part of the ceremony, you, you will uh, see a very, it's like a sticky rice, but it may less. It's very big from here to here. And women in the tribe spend a lot of time to making it because in the final part they want to share with, with all of the people participate with that. But we still don't see the news reporting how they make it. But they are also doing a lot of things in the tribe that, that they cannot be seen. And so this talk trying to explore the gender issues as in indigenous television news in Taiwan. The representation of gender in indigenous media is involved with gender norms, taboo, and cultural regulation in different ethnic groups and different indigenous societies. And in the news production process, gender issues influence indigenous anchors and reporters in interview and forecasting perspective. Furthermore, gender bias affects the ethnic images produced and presented in indigenous news. So that's the first part I'm trying to raise here, to see how gender has been re represented in the news. And this research also carry out in order to understand what indigenous news professional encounter when considering gender cultural space in the news production process and what gender issues are involved in indigenous media. So that's part of the reason I'm showing those films. And therefore, we need to know what is indigenous knowledge and indigenous gender issues in the news production process. For example, if you go to a specific tribe, the, re the journalists need to be trained to know where is the cultural sp space they can get in and where is not. And also, the news need to broadcast and tell the audience and all participants, uh, people participating in the events, including the tourists, where is the space for men, where is the space for women. If you did not follow it, sometimes people will get angry with the people from outside. And also, ethics in the news production process. For example, some journalists, they are trying to make in the news, so sometimes they think they have privilege to get, go into those cultural space. And some, some trap is open for that. Some, some trap will be very angry with all of those people doing that. Because a lot of tradition has been changed if everyone just use special title and they want to get into a cultural space and they, they are no longer can keep the traditional way. And gender cultural translation, indigenous knowledge and audience. And I will mention about this later because there are a lot of cultural translation from one tribe to another tribe. They have no similar words, so you don't know how to say it. i give one example. Um, a lot of uh, 
words if they related with sex, and then people couldn't say it in public. But if you need to report news about breast cancer, but without mentioning breast, <laughs> how can you report it? And that's what happened to the reporter, because they need to think a very complicated way to explain that. And sometimes they use, for example, um, in one trap they use a uh, fig, fig to re represent women's breast. So you need to use very indirect way to explain to the public. And in many news, you couldn't talk about rape or sexual action and even a condom. A lot of words, you just couldn't use it. But sometimes they are news, it's for medical use uses because you need to inform them so people know how to prevent some young, young generation get pregnant too early or for the health uh, reason, they need to do some like protection. And it's all become very difficult. First of all, the, in the travel, they don't have medical words. People, it's more like a, they have a special way, their own traditional way for, for medicine, not, not from a Western society. So they don't have such kind of word at all. So how do you report it? But we don't mention that. So sometimes you need to tell story. The whole news process become a new, like like a storytelling, <laughs> yeah, and you can imagine it become very long, <laughs> and then news need to be short, <laughs> and then sometimes when the news go to the next page, the subtitle still in the previous one, <laughs> and that's what happened, and it's kind of I think the anchor is not easy at all. It's like go into an exam every day because you need to find a proper word to say something. It's not exist at all. Or you know what word, but you couldn't say it in front of the public. Because I remember this one news, like, that's the male, uh, male anchor. But he feel it's very difficult for him to report in the news. Actually, he's trying to, like, ask uh, the young people in the trap to use condom to prevent too many young people get pregnant. But there's words in the trap, but he couldn't say it. So he say in a very uncertain way. So for the elder people, they feel, is it possible you don't know the words or you don't know how to say it? And for the young generation, they feel, it's not clear at all. Can you, can you say it clearly? Ah. So it kind of both different generation are not all not happy with him <laughs> when he reporting the news. And then he is male. You can think about if that's a female reporter, this will even worse because they feel it's not proper or impolite to say it in front of the public. Sometimes they say it, and the elder people will tell those anchor, it's not right at all. That's impolite, and that's not a proper way. So they are not happy with the news. So, but actually there's no such kind of word in the tribe at all. Or they know the words, but they could not say it. And it all causes a lot of difficulty when those um, like medical news or they are things related with like sexual words and you will hear a lot of story in the indigenous news because that's ju just not a traditional way to report it so you can see the cultural space is not only exists in the real world it also exists in the reporting newsroom they encounter problems every day. So that's what happened about the gender issue and cultural translation. I just want to give one uh, example about, so that's why people need to know indigenous knowledge and why they are doing it and for what reason they use this way. Or they need to just have some modern words to, to start to think about what is the new word they can use in the newsroom. Because right now, many tribes from different genres, they encounter the same problem. They don't have computer this world. So they use kind of like Japanese to Japanese character to talk about the computer. Yeah.
personal computer. Yeah, just on because um, sometimes in the reporting process, you can hear different language <laughs> in one sentence. <laughs> because elder people, Taiwan used to be occupied by Japan, so some elder people, they only know Japanese language. So for certain words, they use Japanese word to say it. And then right now I have modern concept. There are many words, particular, for example, like football. I don't know how indigenous news reporting news for England. Football. Football, oh, yeah. yeah. Because they don't have football in the tribe, but you need to report in the news. Or sometimes you need to report the global in a more global context. And then you then you have no word to connect with it. So so and Sometimes the gender issue and gender concept are different. So all of this, uh, the reporter in the indigenous news need to think about one way to convey the knowledge and also give explanation with that. And so that's why I'm, I feel the anchor reporter as a bridge to connect different cultures and different society. They are not only reporting the news, they need to build a connection and explain it. And so interview was conducted with different indigenous ethnic news reporters and anchors in indigenous television news, and I just show you who they are. So uh, indigenous anchor and cultural translator among different cultures. So when they're making the news, sometimes they need to not only translate language, they need to introduce the uh, indigenous knowledge behind that. So people can understand what's going on and why the gender issue exists and for what reason people need to understand it and in what ways you need to cope with that. And then also it provides different cultural background of ethnic group and explain gender issues to the audience. For example, if you go to frying fish but you couldn't come close to a boat, the audience uh, the tourists need to know why not only men can be there and male cannot. Female cannot, and you need to find a way if they don't want to follow it. How can you deal with it? So there are a lot of things people need to need to know before they go. And media become one bridge. Before the uh, special festival, they need to know how to uh, what is the cultural translation when they go into a tribe. And they research also uh, interview anchors and reporters of different ethnic groups to understand the difficulty which journalists encounter. And a strategy to explain gender issues and relating news events. For example, they are using a story to let you know what's going on. Or they need to have a special like a column to tell you uh, why uh, the gender issues uh, is uh, you need to follow in this track. And then uh, for the media culture society perspective to explain, explore how gender factors influence indigenous anchors to report the news so as to produce the news with more gender awareness. And the language and cultural translation, that's just, I just explained, and making news with journalists from different ethnic groups. So that means from one group to another, the gender issues are different. So when you translate the news, you also need to translate the culture, and you also need to help people to understand from this culture to that culture, uh, if they are different. And why you need to follow it. And sometimes may disagree with that. But news also provide a public space for people to debating about that. That's one reason I just mentioned at the beginning about the young people in the Amish tribe. They are trying to have their own like age system. Age system is um, they actually young people from different age, they have special way to train different age people with traditional way, but right now it's only for male, not for female. So the female is trying to, also they have their own system so they can uh, also learn the traditional way in the tribe. Reporter anchors producers from different ethnic groups and they are all involved with cultural translation. So not only inside the newsroom, also, uh, also need to target the audience and give them a uh, similar Training. Okay, so missing Im image, representation of women in the indigenous media. So 
I think a reporter need to report more for the women. Uh, even they couldn't show in the ceremony, but they do a lot of things behind. So I think the reporter need to be trained, not only reporting the men in the traction of the news, also need to report all of those women from different perspectives and see how they also participate in all of the pre preparation process. And then there are also some uh, issues, for example, uh, the younger generation, they have different perspective to the trap and different anticipation with that. I think that's also very good for to be the main issue for the news to reporting them because they are kind of shipped in two different society. For example, like those political figures, they are in high position in the high society, but when they went back to their own tribe, they couldn't partic participate in the public sphere. And also right now, the uh, chairman of the indigenous people, uh, television news, also female. But when, they, when she goes back to the tribe, sometimes she also couldn't join the public sphere. But when I ask them, they always tell me, you are not in the tribe, you don't know the pressure of that. So for the people inside, it's even harder for the people outside try to tackle those problems. Because they want to, they don't want to break the relationship of uh, the human relationship in the tribe. If they insist to do something, it's not traditional. Sometimes they will be blamed for all of the people. So that's not easy at all. But I think the media provide one kind of public sphere for people to debate about the gender issues. And also, new media provide another way for the people to voice their, uh, their situation. Because in the tribe, probably they couldn't say it. But in the new media, in the outside world, they, they can just uh, show in all of those issues as they want. So sometimes it becomes different perspective to bring the uh, different point of view back to the tribe. And for the younger generation, they can be enlightened and make further change for the society. So, uh, in year festival, uh, I just list some of the festival. They are all the festival, uh, a lot of female cannot participate with that. For example, like the flying fish, you just see. And the year festival, that's from Wunong. They shoot uh, the pig's ear instead of players. And they are a lot of, like the bow, bows. Female also couldn't touch it because they believe if female touch the, the hunting material and then they couldn't catch any animal. Yeah, and any sea festival, that's the, the tribe I just mentioned about. And so men catch news attention, but how about women? They are also doing a lot of things, but they are not in the news. And sometimes um, they are traditional taboo and gender norms and cultural translation about with them. So uh, they are both voices for indigenous women. They also sometimes they use new media to become a channel to show their opinion. And female image and transformation of indigenous society. It's not only the transformation of image, I think it also changed the social status of image of indigenous society if news media can provide different perspective, uh, not only the traditional one. And here is another example about Ina's kitchen. That's the uh, like a cooking program for the indigenous food. But the presenter is a male. So quite often you can see those active male presenters in front of the, just explain all of those food. And then the female is in the background just cooking. <laughs> so it's not a very good representation too, even in the like cooking program. Yeah, so um, it's like traditional gender role and stereotype representation quite often appear in such kind of no matter news or program. 
I think this actually this question need to be raised and put more emphasis on all of those women they are also doing or like keeping the traditional way of So a representation of indigenous women in the indigenous television news often show their traditional image, sing, dancing and cooking. But uh, sometimes it's still meaningful, for example, like Toko women is like waiting in a traditional way and not a lot of people know how to how to wait yet. So when you keep the film, you also keep the tradition. And uh, Sanxia women dancing the traditional festival, but the eye, that's the one you just see. You see the, the bell. But the bell actually, the, the, the ring actually did not have too many people know how, know how to make it. So fa some family, if there are some damage with that, no, no one knows how to fix it. So that's why people need to feel it now, or to ask those people they know how to, uh, how to make it to teach someone so they can they, they can kind of be fixed after uh, for some years from now. Although it shows how indigenous women convey cultural translation, however indigenous media presents different image of indigenous women in the changing culture and society. Therefore, indigenous media can facilitate development of indigenous culture and society. In indigenous taboo and gender issues uh, that's the Amis and the Bunun and the, the cases I just showed you. So that's why um, in many cases the reporter also need to be careful with that. If you touch off those hunting equipment, people will get angry with that. And if later they couldn't catch any animal, the meal can be blamed for the reason. And if the flying fish festival if someone got some disease in, 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 the air, in the sea, but before some female touch it, you can, you can imagine she will become the reason for some disaster. So that's why a lot of... Um, the concept probably will be changed, but um, right now still in the debating process. And so it's changing society and changing rules. And gender issues and gender taboo need to be understood in many cases. So the research question is about how can indigenous journalists become mediator, do cultural translation, and transmit gender issues? How can indigenous knowledge and indigenous taboo influence the production of indigenous TV news? The theory, uh, Mandy uh, mentioned who translate what for whom translated, when and where, how to translate, why translate. So from indigenous news, you need to understand who is your audience, for what reason you translate that. And when you need to do a translation, for what reason you are doing it. So from production process to a reception process, you need to know all of those gender issues. So translation involves both language and cultural context. And indigenous anchors as mediator, media Media indigenous, indigenous culture society to audience from different ethnic group and articulate gender issues and how gender language has been represented in the indigenous news. That's one of the focus my research is trying to raise here. And translation of gender issues, uh, it's gender and social connection. That's why the lowest female, no matter political, teaching or those people in a high social status, they are still under those pressure because they don't want to break the social connection. So sometimes they need to follow, although they have questions with that. So media in some ways become a public sphere, kind of uh, raise all of those issues for discussion. And social practice and gender issues, it's not only about the news, it's also about no, it also linked with the social status with women. When I making similar talk in Taipei, many um, NGO group they are assist many uh, women. They they experience many bad experience in the tribe, and when they try to assist them, they found that's a main problem with that. 
because you need to go into the indigenous system knowing their knowledge. Sometimes the people coming from outside is hard to help because the tribe will say this is not following the traditional way. So women are used to be treated in that way. So it's hard to make the change. That's why media become another important channel to raise the question so the people from outside, when they're trying to provide the help, they know the knowledge and they know what they care about. And people can find a way to provide the help. Uh, tri tribal women uh, will need it. And uh, so that's communication, action, and gender issues. Those issues also need to be raised in the news and the program for discussion. And indigenous knowledge and cultural translation. So it's not only translated culture, it's also translate uh, culture. It's uh, and articulate indigenous knowledge. It's connection between different cultural contexts. And search for cultural world and cultural contexts. So people from outside need to go into the indigenous knowledge system to understand what they think about before uh, doing anything. And the gender issue, sometimes probably different from outside, but sometimes you need to be understand before you are trying to change it. Okay. Mm. And the problem encounter is sometimes it's hard to find similar gender language among different indigenous languages. And anchors explain gender language and, and concept. Everybody explains in different way. So sometimes the same news can be very different. They, they need to find different words to say the same thing, but with their own interpretation. And that's time limitation, and I just mentioned this. How? Mm. And this is the medical part I just mentioned about. Uh, so it's diff there are difficulties of referring to breast cancer without using the word breast. So everybody just use different way to explain it. Yeah, and you still need to say it clear, clearly so people can understand what you are trying to address in your news. And this is only one example. There are also many other examples. Mm. And there are words you couldn't see in public. So you need to use the words uh, in a very uncertain way. And sometimes people just couldn't catch it. And there are many scientific words we couldn't find it in the indigenous language. But you need to report it. So sometimes you need to invent new words to tell the audience. And I give another example from Canada. Uh, there is a film called Angry Nuke. So this film actually is a film uh, by female director from Canada. And the main thing is about the skin of the seal. Because we eat chicken, we eat beef, no one blames us. But Inuk, when they kill a seal, use their skin, a lot of animal protection organization feel it's very, it's not good at all. But from the female perspective, female director perspective, she just wants to tell the world that's the way how Inuk people live for thousand years. There's no right to tell them not to kill seal and use their skin to make other protect, make different kind of product because they actually allow them to eat them, but it's not allowed. Uh, people from uh, Inuk tribe to uh, produce like a scrolls or something. But if we, the commerce system has been broke down, many people just do it for living. They know other ways. So when people did not kill a seal, actually like, in some ways they kill some of the people from the tribe because they couldn't survive. That's the way they make for living. And that's one of the example 
how Canadian female reporter use media to voices their uh, indigenous knowledge and their their situation in the tribe. And I think some people, uh, indigenous media in Taiwan, can also draw some kind of attention to tell other people what is indigenous knowledge and what do they think about. Because if think from from different perspective, probably it's not only it's not always a bias to thinking about other people's culture and other people's uh, society. We also need to respect them. Probably the gender situation, the ethnic situation are different, but we still need to try to understand first. So uh, that's how media put into a put into cultural and social context. And okay, so let's uh, so media help to represent indigenous viewpoint. They change the bias to indigenous people, and media also as a weapon to confront with understanding and fight for justice. And this is uh, how new media communicate in language, having gender awareness, and social network in the, uh, that's uh, in the ice world, that's how the Canadian film uh, trying to address the issue to the audience. And indigenous cultural reservation and cross borders. And there are also different views when cultural cross border, language cross border, social context cross border. We, are, we need to go into the indigenous knowledge system to understand what's going on there. So conclusion, report gender in cultural context and general re uh, re responding to social change in modern society and also help audience to understand gender taboo. Media as a platform to form new social network and support system. And it's important to empower women through media. And the news also need to emphasize the viewpoint from indigenous women and voices for indigenous women add new words to changing society and do a cultural translation for gender. So this research reveals ways gender factors influence news production in different ethnic groups. It identifies key gender issues and also provides suggestions to facilitate indigenous news production that embrace both gender awareness and multicultural gender image. And finally, medical news may change to become socially accept acceptable in tribal area by taking into account different uh, differing gender and cultural views. Understand gender taboo but find ways to address important gender issues. Okay, that's my final remark. Okay, that's, that was uh, fascinating. We've, um, we've had talks in the, uh, recently on uh, indigenous media, but, uh, but we haven't really covered much when it comes to uh, gender issues. Right? It's just something that's, been, that's occasionally come up in in discussion, but not this kind of uh, degree of, of, uh, of focus. Um, we often tend to, th often our students who look at gender in Taiwan, one of the, the, uh, uh, the things that they, one of the conclusions they often get is that Taiwan is actually quite a, uh, uh, an exciting case because of the, um, particularly when they do the comparison with South Korea or, or, or Japan. Uh, but it sounds like the case that, that um, from this angle, the picture looks quite, quite different. Um, so, um, I mean, one of the questions that I asked, and you kind of touched upon at one point, was um, um, how does Taiwan's um, feminist movement deal with this uh, issue? You, you did briefly mention um, activists who try and uh, work with victims, uh, but generally how does Taiwan's um, tai -bay, mainly Taipei-based uh, feminist movement deal with with um, uh, indigenous communities. You can understand they are the female actually under pressure, but not only the people within the within the tribe, people from outside. If you with something tackle the gender issues, sometimes people will they they still try to keep traditional way. Mm -hmm. So my research actually is not 
to encourage people to again uh, to tackle the gender issues and try to ask them to do something. But I'm trying to raise the issue to let the people in the tribe can discuss by themselves. Because for the people from outside, particularly from Han people, if you raise something and then question with that, sometimes people will think you don't understand the indigenous language. Or you are trying to encourage people in the the female people in the tribe to do something untraditionally. Mm -hmm. So that's why I need to be careful for my research. And actually one scholar in Taiwan she tell she used to tell you need to do further of this research because they also want to take over those gender issues, but they are the people from inside. They couldn't do it. Because they look they couldn't lose the connection with their family. And if they are trying to raise those issues, they are trying to make some change, sometimes they will be blamed for all of the people in the tribe, particularly male elder people. Yeah. So so indigenous uh, TV news to uh, um, I was thinking about the the way it's managed. Mm. Uh, uh, is that also very patriarchal? If I say yes, and then that means I kind of identify them as that. But what I believe is some taboo originally probably is for good intent. Okay. As they say, they try to protect women. Oh. But I know, but right now, when the society become like this, this reason cannot. Um, many people were not happy with this kind of reason. Mm. So some people they want to change, but they need to change in a very subtle way, or they will become a target to under pressure for from for all the people. So so um, uh, if the reporting is handled badly from a uh, then what, what happens? Is, is the concern that uh, politicians or elders will complain? Yeah. Okay. Because they will, they will tell off those young female uh, generation because they are trying to change the tradition of the tribe. Mm -hmm. And they don't think that's right. Particular right now, everything in the tribe is kind of missing. Mm -hmm. And they are trying to, when they are trying to preserve the preserve the culture, that also means they need to preserve the tradition, and gender issues is part of the tradition. So, um, so one of the kind of um, topics I was curious about was uh, how does Indigenous TV deal with uh, news about marriage equality? That, okay, there that, we've got a pretty um, controversial uh, issue. And um, Indigenous TV can't avoid that topic. Marriage. Marriage equality. Different news, just report it from different perspectives. Okay. Some, some actually is in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because quite a lot of people actually, they, they need support mm -hmm. from this perspective. And I think for younger generation, it's quite okay. But, but for... It's also some religious, uh, religious reason mm -hmm. because a lot of Catholic are uh, indigenous people. So they not only the pressure from the like the leader from the tribe, they are also religion religious reason. They kind of um, didn't think it in the proper way. So it's kind of a very complicated web for the people they are under those different kind of pressure, not only from the gender issues, also from religious. Uh, so sometimes they are not the, sometimes they just, um, they, they are not necessary to stay in the tribe. They went to the city, so mm -hmm. they still can have their own space. And also, they will, sometimes reporter will use the, uh, a detour to solve the problem. For example, when, Politician in a very high position. She told me every time she went back to the tribe, she couldn't join the public debating or meeting in the tribe. She tell her brother or her father, 
to address her point of view in the uh, trial. Mm -hmm. Or outside, um, or she also used the new media as one way because she feel camera is her weapon. She don't need to go back to the tribe to say it. She can say it in the other society. So people also hear what she address her opinion with that. So there are also different ways. It's, um, you probably couldn't say in the tribe, but you can say in the Han society, mm -hmm. or in your position, yeah. Okay, let's open it for some questions. Oh yeah, uh, B. Thank you. It's a really interesting um, uh, topic you, you have here. Um, of course, uh, there's a few keywords here. Tradition. Mm -hmm. So tradition in indigenous people's context always has to be good, right? Has to be respected. In many ways. Yes. Yeah. So it is almost like there's no way that you can even argue or even put into a public forum to for discussion. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that right? Also okay. because of the people don't want to hurt hurt the feeling of the people in the tribe if okay. they're trying to tackle it. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's one of the keywords that mm -hmm. you you sort of prevent. Yeah any further meaningful discussion. Another is uh, this kind of insider's and outsider's position. So every time a Han people want to make any contribution or have some sort of discussion, you have to stop. Just like the, uh, in this country, whenever you talk about Muslim, then you, you, you have to stop because that's a certain way that you feel you might offend people. At least from my perspective, this kind of inside outside. Uh, 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 so, more or less, you are suggesting revolution need to be carried out from within, and that should be the indigenous people. They really need to take on this task. So, um, after all the interviews, I'm asking you, uh, from your uh, interviews, those. Uh, indigenous anchors and reporters, do they want to carry out revolution? Do they have a way of get around it? Mm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, actually, uh, at the time when I was doing the interview, I'm quite surprised within a certain different tribe, only one, she feel this kind of situation need to be changed. That's the one she uh, actually encounter a problem when she trying to make the news for the glass beans. <laughs> because she feel why she could because she's a female, she's in that uh, class, and then she couldn't make the news. For her, she need to depend on her husband to making this news. She feel that's, that's not the right way. But I think she's the only one. At that time, I'm quite surprised. And for, oh, I need to tell more about the fishing bowl festival one. Uh, because a lot of tourists go into the tribe, and then if let's you do you want to go on the boat to to try? Yeah, because but you are female. That's what happened in the tribe. But you are female, so you couldn't. But later, there's one tribe. They they just let the female get on the boat to see what's going on. And then there are a lot of debating in the tribe. First of all, I think it's not because the gender role has been, yeah, it's because of economic driving okay. force, because you need, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not the, so that's why a lot of debating. And for the people, they feel uneasy with that because it's kind of, I think all of us probably also need to encounter certain kind of taboo. It's not, re not reasonable at all, but you believe it. So the people in the tribe, actually, they, they just say, they are people from outside. So they are not the people from the tribe. So it doesn't count. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you can see if one trap they they just take money and then let the female go on the boat, probably other trap will follow later. Mm. And the tradition will be be changed. Yeah. Mm. And at that time when I asking the reporter, she feel not happy with that. She feel that's tradition and shouldn't let the female people get on the boat. But I think probably it's also uh, most of the anchor they are 50 years old or above. So they are not the younger generation. And for that, that's why um, I think this is not only a reasonable or not, it's about the feeling because they are trying to keep the tradition. So even though it's not reasonable, they are trying to keep the tradition. So in that sense, ethnic reason or the traditional reason is higher than gender issues in their heart. And I think as a people from outside, we, I kind of couldn't against it. Because in my talk in Taipei, there's, I think there's one audience actually asked me, if they do have a pregnant woman and she don't want she she don't want to join the uh the festival, do you think she did something wrong? Because if we are trying to say it's equal, everybody should can join the festival, and people probably still feel not they comfortable if there's taboo there and then she broke it. And some indigenous tribe, not only pregnant women, couldn't go into the festival. Even her husband couldn't go into the festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yes, go ahead. Hi, uh, thank, thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm Zhen Yan. Okay, and uh, I have a question about, not very close about gender issue, about the chain. Like, uh, you, mean, you mentioned oh. like, uh, she need to uh, make a phone call to her husband to ask for the chain for the uh, news. So if like this cultural, this kinds of cultural products selling may uh, kind of destroy or lose the original cultural concept. Mm -hmm. So how to encourage like most Han people or most other people to know the original cultural concepts by media? How to encourage us to get know to solve this misunderstanding? Because we don't know the chain is only for the village leader. We have no idea about it. Mm -hmm. So how to encourage us to watch the news? Or the this kind of news could be spread in different media to turn on. Maybe in uh, mandatory speaking news channel mm -hmm. or in others. Uh, social media channel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's about like how to encourage us and how to solve the misunderstanding from outsider. Okay, thank you for the question. Actually, that's why indigenous television news. Uh, because uh, in recent years, indigenous issues catch more and more attention. So right now, not only indigenous television news, also Hakka television news. When they are making the news, sometimes they, they are not only report in their own channel, they kind of share with the mainstream uh, channel. So they just change the subtitle from Hakka to Han, from indigenous <laughs> to Han. Yeah, from different, yeah, from, because they are certain different tribes. So you just change the subtitle, and then they also uh, kind of can be seen from other channel. So they reach, uh, more audience than before. And there's one time as my student, you don't understand German, but you but you, you see the German news, you probably don't understand French, but you also see the French news. And why not you couldn't understand indigenous news? Sometimes there are also some bias in our, our, our thought. Probably some people think some news are important. But from the indigenous perspective, there are certain different kind of language in the global concept. You can think about certain different country, and then they are using different news, reporting the news for you, and they understanding. If we can understand so many different countries from the world, for some for one reason we could understand indigenous people. 
But to what, okay, apart from uh, public TV, mm. do any other channels actually take yes. independent TV really? reports? Yes. Did they do? Yes. Oh, because, for example, yeah. they are quite popular. All of those, uh, you can see how many people in that bus uh, mm -hmm. the Pai Wan's uh, news. They are all come from, they are not only Taiwan, they are many people from all over the world that actually go there to join the festival. And also the flying fish one. There are so many people from outside went to Taiwan, particularly want to join the event. And I share, I share with you with another case. There's one time I joined the Pai Wan uh, festival. And it's um, like the young people when you grow up, you need to pass uh, some test. And the test is there's a bamboo tree you need to just cry up, cry up there. And there are some people from other countries send their children to the tribe because they want to just it's kind of test and pass the it pass the uh, ceremony and then that means the children has grow up and everybody will kind of give a blessing for for the young children for the young people. So it's also about education, but in different way. Probably it's in a very indigenous way, but people like it. Yeah, Darren. <laughs> Um, uh, thanks, uh, Crystal, for your uh, um, fu, a rich presentation, <laughs> for your enthusiasm. Yes. Um, I'm going to share something and just ask you if you've observed anything similar, and it's related to uh, ways to address important gender issues. And I think one is uh, to emphasize that, that tradition or culture is not just sign of something out there, an objective social fact, but is partly rhetorical. And there's a story um, by Aki Aji, an Atayal writer, a woman writer. And in the story, um, this woman's husband wants her to do something, to live somewhere. And, and he says, you have to because it's ga gaga, or it's gaga, which is their word for tradition. And she says, no, there's a, a counter gaga, a woman's gaga. <laughs> and, and you're just saying that it's gaga to get me to do what you want. And so they end up in the story having this debate about what gaga is or, or what it, it should be. So I think... Um, to, to emphasize that, to some extent, tradition and culture are, are rhetorical as one way to address these uh, gender issues uh, from within. So I'm wondering if in uh, news reports, uh, reporters have ever tried to um, um, report on debates um, in the local community where, where culture and tradition is, is open to debate and not just is not just something that the elders can, can lay down the law on. Is that clear? Uh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, actually, different tribes have different ways to deal with it. For example, like Amis. Uh, I mentioned about Sea Festival. Mm -hmm. And actually, a lot of people join the festival. So sometimes females also want to come close to the sea and to see the boat goes out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of tourists change the situation. Because if people go there and you couldn't participate because you are female, you can imagine a lot of people, they don't know the tab taboo before. They feel angry with that. Mm -hmm. So some tribe actually make some change to let people also watch it. Has, have they ever r reported on uh, the debates surrounding these things? Yeah, some of them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there are different types of TV program. And one program is like a voices for indigenous people. Mm -hmm. It's more like a public forum. People can debating about different issues. Mm -hmm. And actually, some of my students, they, they, they are reporter for indigenous people, uh, for indigenous television news right now. And they told me after I address those issues, they also uh, make some change mm -hmm. and reporting more gender issues. Mm -hmm. on the process. And then also, uh, there are some female reporters, when I interview them, they told me they are happy to be interviewed because they never think about gender issues before. Mm -hmm. Like the Sai uh, Xia one. Because um, she made the news, but did not from the uh, gender perspective. And later, she actually um, participated a lot and reporting a lot about how female educator in the tribe they are using like APP uh, to teach yeah. their own indigenous language. Mm -hmm. So I think 
uh, younger generation actually change little by little. So it's not only everything is traditional way. Mm -hmm. I think the question need to be raised first and then see what people can do little by little. Mm -hmm. But of course, they are always have some different up, upset up opinion from mm. the male. But yeah, yeah but um, I think some people actually raised a similar question before, but not for long. A lot of men, also a famous writer, immediately say, we are protecting women. So that's why the tradition now is the tradition is like this. So you need to have different strategy and different way to address it. Or your younger generation need to change it little by little. Mm. And then um, I think also the age difference can make a lot of change. Different generation is quite different. Mm. So different tribe also open in a different way. Mm. So you mentioned about the age of the anchors. I was quite curious about that because I, I generally I think we would ex uh, we come to expect relatively young yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, anchors on Taiwan's uh, media. So is the key reason here language? Yes, because uh, only mm -hmm. people in the fifty years old they they still use indigenous language, and for my students they are just start to learn. Many of them actually grow up in the city, so they also don't know the language very well. And some of them, because they can speak because uh, they are raised by their grandparents, so they need to communicate with their grandparents, that's why they, they know how to speak indigenous language. But also, you know the language it doesn't mean you can report the news. It's different standard. Yeah, and right now when we are talking about language, we didn't talking about Mm, different accent or different tone mm -hmm. because for example like Benun in different area when they all speak Benun language that's totally different mm -hmm. so sometimes even choose the anchor is very difficult for indigenous language news because this 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 time if you choose uh uh Taiwan from North next time you probably need to choose Taiwan from from East because a different language can be kept uh, by this way. If you only choose one area, they speak different way of language, even they are belong to the same ethnic groups. Yeah, Ivan. Because this is a, a very um, interesting contradiction, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Between a kind of universalism and particularism. Um, <clears throat> I like the first questioner. I'm somebody who never hesitates to offend people's religious belief, particularly monotheists. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't think problems are ever solved if they're not discussed. Mm. Um, so I, I'm wondering, and, and also I, I think that uh, cultures that don't evolve die. Mm. Okay, so we can see that with Brexit. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely serious. Um, now, um, so my question is, are there on Indigenous TV any discussion programs where issues like this can be raised and discussed by uh, Indigenous people themselves? Yes. Uh, I suppose because um, talk shows are so popular in Taiwan, particularly uh, politics talk shows. So I'm, I'm also curious about that. It's a great question, actually. Yeah, that's the program I just mentioned about. It's like uh, the voices for Indigenous people, so it's a public for forum. And every time they invite people like from uh, from the tribe uh, also people from um, from academia or from the government to discuss the together and those issues also have been discussed quite often in the television programs. And does the debate get heated? Yes. It does. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people ring and then tell they shouldn't do this or that. But it's also but that's why it's important and need to be discussed. Yeah. And um, yeah, Adam. Hi, thanks. Um, I loved your talk. Thank you. um, I, I really love um, the the focus on different tensions and the problematics and the unresolved nature. And, and you can see like you yourself are struggling with <laughs> this. And I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it's great. Um, when you first started um, showing uh, people from different tribes. Mm -hmm. Broadcasting, I was thinking to myself, 
how on earth do they divvy up airtime? You have 16 tribes, some are recognized First Nations or what have you, and some of them have a few hundred people, some of them have a couple hundred thousand people. I could imagine easily intertribal tensions over whether or not uh, everybody gets the same amount of airtime versus we are a million times bigger than you guys, we deserve the airtime. Mm -hmm. And while I was thinking about that, that led me to the, the gen your gender focus, which is, it sounds like um, some of the tribes uh, are more rigidly traditional mm -hmm. in their approach to gender, and some are more open to, uh, some would be more amenable to Taipei feminist circles, not necessarily that they're Taipei <laughs> feminist, but that, that some would be sort of, uh, more open to sort of uh, quote unquote progressive thinking on mm -hmm. gender as opposed to others. And so putting those two thoughts of mine together, I was wondering, intertribal, um, is there any competition in the representation of gender on indigenous news to try to sort of outcompete other tribes um, for scarce resources, whether that's, for example, if a tribe is more progressive, um, in quotes, on gender issues, would they represent that more um, in their news broadcasts um, in order to appeal more to forces in Taipei, right? Or would a tribe that is more rigidly traditional, for example, in order to attract tourists to something mm -hmm. a tourist might perceive as different mm -hmm. and exotic and therefore interesting, actually play up their their rigidity um, on, on, on gender issues. So that's my question. To what extent do different tribes see indigenous news strategize a way of representing gender in order to achieve uh, other political or economic um, mm. ends? Is, is that a dynamic that goes on at all? Yes, I think that's the political econ the driving force behind political economy uh, factors because it's not only gender because if people kind of open to a tourist to do something that's not allowed before but they can gain some more money sometimes people do it and but some some tribe actually they insist they want to keep the traditional way and I think that's the way they think they are treasure their own tradition so um, the driving force is different. So it's, it's hard to use one reason to say, even within the same tribe, they are different opinion. Mm -hmm. And that's quite common in different tribes. They are always debating for different things. And it's not only like tribe versus Taipei. They are also different people in the tribe versus each other. And male and female, if they are in different gender, generation, they are also different. And there are also a lot of like gay people in the tribe. And sometimes they are di they, they need to under pressure not only from the tribe but also from religion reason. So it's very diverse. So I couldn't use one reason to say it. But I think people trying to test and break the rule sometimes. For example, one reporter told me, um, if they are dancing normally in the middle, they are always male, females <laughs> from outside. And there's one time the reporter, she's a female from indigenous television news. Uh, actually, she, the reason she was in that festival is because New Zealand sent a reporter team and trying to report something for Taiwan. And so she actually guiding all those male uh, reporter from New Zealand get into the first row. And then not for long, she has been kicked out <laughs> to the second row again. So she know even she is a reporter, she's still not allowed to be in the circle. They told the people they are doing it because of uh, making a film. And you know if you, you are in beside, behind, you couldn't get a very good view because you will film other people's button. So that's why she wants to get into the first row. But still, she cannot. They just squeeze her out. 
and then she moved to the second row again. And that's what happened, but she tried. And they report her right now in a very high position of become political figure right now. But I think when she went back to the tri tribe, sometimes she still couldn't go into like traditional cultural space for discussion. But she is the reporter, she told me she just used new media to become a channel to voice her own opinion. So, can I answer your question? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, let's thank uh, Professor uh, Sun one more time.